to the depths of the sea. Creation's revealing your majesty. From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring. Every creature you Good morning. Good morning. Come on, it's later than 8.15. You can do better than that. <laughs> welcome to worship here at Zion Lutheran Church, and welcome to you who are joining us at home on Zoom or from wherever you are. It is a blessing to be able to worship on this beautiful day, and we celebrate so many things with the baptism at this service, and it's just a good day to find joy in this service. So I hope you will find joy. As we get started, for those of you here in the sanctuary, I want to call your attention to the connection sheet. As always, there's a lot of opportunities on here. One in particular on the back, you can see there's an opportunity to sign up to purchase poinsettias for the Christmas, um, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day services um, where you can put, buy one in honor or in memory of someone to help beautify the sanctuary. So I just want to make sure you see that. So as you're looking through this and filling it out, you can then put this in the offering plate later. I do have one other announcement today. Um, some of you may have heard already, but if not, um, Ginger Klein, she did die peacefully on Friday evening, late on Friday evening. We received word yesterday morning. She had been in hospice care in Eaton for the last several weeks after being diagnosed with a very aggressive um, brain tumor. So we just, we have no funeral plans yet. The family is considering something after Christmas somewhere or maybe right after the beginning of the new year. But we'll make sure to keep you aware of those plans as the family makes those arrangements. So I just ask you to keep Jerry and Rebecca and Andy and Amy, all of their, all the rest of Ginger's family and friends in your prayers today as they are um, settling with this news of her passing. Today we will continue with our theme of a geography of Christmas. 
So today as we journey, we see a desert in bloom. And we hear the word joy. And I see joy right here on this face. So I invite you to reflect about where you have found joy in the dry and joyless places or moments in your lives. So at this time, I invite you to quiet your hearts and minds as we um, go into this time of confession and forgiveness together. Please stand as you're able. The God who speaks comfort to us calls us here. The God who addresses us with tenderness meets us here. The God who guides us with gentleness cares for us here. And the God who promises to meet us wherever we find ourselves meets us here. We journey together, experiencing the heights and the depths where God will go to bring us home. Let us join in this time of confession together. Loving God, we confess that in hearing your voice, we have closed our ears. In sensing your leading, we have turned away. In feeling your presence, we have hidden from you. We have not opened our hands to those in need, our hearts to the hurting, our love and lives to our neighbors. It is never easy for us to confess our sins, forgive our wandering ways, guide us along your paths of peace. When we lose our way, carry us back to you. Lead us in humility, teach us your truth, so we might know your word. Revealed to us in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. People of God, hear this good news. Even now, yes, even in this very moment, God comes to us bringing hope, bringing forgiveness, bringing grace as freely offered gifts for us. Keep awake, even in the desert places in your lives. Watch for signs of God's joy, for God brings life even to the most barren places. By water and the spirit, you are joined to this wonder. Hear that you are forgiven. You have put on Christ, and your sins have been washed away. Rejoice in the way of the Lord. Amen. If we call to him, he will answer us. If we run to him, he will run to us. If we lift our hands, he will lift us up. Come now, praise his name, all you saints of God. Oh, sing for joy to God our strength. Draw near to him, he's here with us. Give him your love, he's in love with us. He will heal our hearts, he will cleanse our hands. If we rend our hearts, he will hail our lands. Oh, sing for joy to God our strength. If we call to him, he will answer us. If we run to him, he will run to us. If we lift our hands, he will lift us up. Come now, praise his name, all you saints of God. 
draw near to him he is here with us give him your love he's in love with us he will heal our hearts he will cleanse our hands we rend our hearts he will heal our lands oh sing for joy to god our strength Let us pray. Stir up the wills of all who look to you, Lord God, and strengthen our faith in your coming, that transformed by grace we may walk in your holy way. Open our eyes and ears to see your presence among us, especially in the desert places in our lives and in our world. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, for whom we wait. Amen. I invite you to be seated, and I invite all the kids to come forward for time of Kids in Christ. Well, good morning. Good morning. Oh, jeez. Good morning. Today's about joy. We should be a little more joyful in our greeting, right? No? All right. <laughs> All right. So we are on our journey through Advent. And each week, there has been something else that has shown up in our nativity scene. And our nativity scene is kind of how we tell the story of this journey towards Christ and his birth. So... Let's look around. Why don't you guys stand up and look around? I'm going to make you interact a little more. All right. So the first week, everything got moved around. So what do you remember from the first week? What, what came? It was the manger and some animals, right? And we were reminded about the word hope. All right. The second week, last week, who showed up? Shepherds and some sheep. And we talked about how... God brings us peace. Who's new this week? The angel, yeah. So what do we, what? His name is Gabriel. Could be. It looks like a name might be Gloria. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the angels came. They are messengers sent by God. So in the Bible, we hear that the angels brought Good news of great joy. We can sit back down. Okay? Good news of great joy. So that's what our angel is sharing with us. And to say the word Gloria, it looks like a piece of fabric or a banner, something like that, that they're holding up. You don't think that's her name? Okay. It could be. It would be kind of fun. Because she's an angel. All right. But, you know, to shout Gloria really means to bring excitement and energy to what this message is. So whenever angels show up, we know that God is up to something. And angels may come from the heavens, like the angel in our nativity. But the word angel, did you know it actually means messenger of God? Did you know that? That's our fun fact for the day, messenger of God. So angels can be any of those people that God has put in our lives that bring us messages from God. So, can you think of people who, let's see, um, that have been angels to you? People who have maybe shared some good news of great joy with you? Can you? Do you want to share? Uh, sure, I think about my grandma, but my daughter's name is Emily Lee Gloria. Annalise's grandma, Gloria. <laughs> good. Because she helps out with so much, that's great. How about over here? Angels in your lives? Um, I think my friend Pam, 
parents, moms. Yeah. You. Me? Yeah. Oh, wow. I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> I give you good news sometimes, I think. I was thinking about friends that show up in unexpected ways when they just know that I have a need or something that I maybe not have even anticipated yet, and they just know the right thing to do. Maybe you have a friend like that that um, knows your favorite thing. We can help you with that. Yeah, well, good. All right, so whenever you see an angel in the nativity, I want us to remember that God is sending us messengers with great joy and good news, and pay attention to those and say thank you to those around you that do that. And I think every time that we do that for one another, we help make the world just a little bit better in each of our places that we are, and we can bring joy to okay? All right, let's stand back up. We're gonna do our memory verse This is one way that we share good news as well. All right. Anyone have it memorized yet? No? Oh, you guys. Yeah. All right. Until the day of Christmas. All right. Well, let's see how we do together. You all can join in. This is interactive. All right. Come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. All right. One more time. This is a fun one. Come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Good job. All right, so we're going to wander over here to our Advent wreath again. Remember, it's kind of like our calendar, keeping track of our walking towards Christmas. Thank you for grabbing some light. All right, just put it up just a little bit more. There you go. All right, so today let's start with this tall one. This is our joy candle that we're going to light today. There you go. So we light the candle of joy, the candle of peace. Yeah, let's put it up just a little bit more. There you go. And the candle of hope. There you go. So we, now we have three weeks. One more week. Thank you. All right, so in our cards, I think most of you have picked up a packet of cards already. If any of you would like a packet of cards, there is devotion for each day as we walk through Advent together. So I would like us to pray together the prayer for this day. So I won't do it as a repeat after me because it's a little bit longer. But why don't you join me in prayer? Girls, do you want to circle around? You want to come around? (laughs) I don't want my back to you. All right. So please pray with me. God of joy, you celebrate us when we feel glad. Thanks for the gift of joy and for all of our emotions. Bless those who are too sad or mad to feel joy today. Teach us to care for them in ways that help them feel joy. Amen. So we want you to remember that. Just like the angel in our nativity, this candle of joy reminds us that God sends messengers to bring us joy too. So thanks for coming up. Good to have you. All right. Our reading today comes from Isaiah, the 35th chapter. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. 
they shall see the glory of God, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads, they shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Word of God, word of life. And our gospel reading this morning is from the 11th chapter of the gospel according to Matthew. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to them, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the, lion, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Friends, grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So a couple of weeks ago during Thanksgiving break, um, a lot of our family was out visiting, and I went on a hike one day with a lot of them, a lot of them, not just Sonia and my kids, but uh, we wanted to share a little bit of the Rocky Mountain Front Range beauty with our Minnesota relatives. And so it was my brother and his wife, and they have four kids. And all four of those kids had a significant other or a friend with them. And so we had, I think, 14 total on a hike. Um, we went up to Horse Tooth Falls. So you know where that's at, just on the south end of Fort Collins. Which, of course, at this time of the year, has no falls. I knew this, but probably forgot that. And uh, so the out-of-state family who comes from a state that is abundant with water, right? They had a, lot, a really a good time with this, right? Horsetooth Falls, no falls, no water. 
you know, going up the trail and back. There's cacti lining the trail. They're like, what kind of wilderness did you bring us out here to? What kind of desert? So we didn't find any water. We didn't didn't find the, well, we found the falls, but there was no water from them. But we did find joy as we appreciated the beauty and the wonder of creation with family together. Well, once again, the, our theme for this season in Advent, the geography of Christmas, it keeps us in the wilderness. Last week, if you were here, you heard we were out in the wilderness with John the Baptist. And this week, again, we find ourselves in the desert, a barren place, a place of great challenge and testing, a place where there's very little material comfort. And it might seem strange for some of you to, to think that uh, like this is a strange stop along the way towards Christmas, but it reflects a lot, I think, about our lives, the reality of life, the reality of hum- humanity. As we wait for Christmas, many, many people don't find it very easy to live in the joy of the season. And for those of us who are able to live in the joy of the season, so often I know it feels like we're anticipating, we're anticipating, and we get there, we celebrate, and then it's all over. Got to go back to our lives. Go back to facing, uh, listening to the news every day and what's going on in the world. Go back to all of the struggles that that maybe you're having or our loved ones are having. But it's this season, this waiting that I think teaches us that the birth of Jesus is just for these places along the way of life. Today, each of the scriptures takes us into the wilderness to to show us that true joy can be found in God, especially in those difficult times and places in life. Isaiah finds joy in the wilderness as, as he imagines the desert in full bloom. Everything is leaping with joy and the desert is suddenly bursting with color. The driest places are filled with water. Then John the Baptist in the gospel finds joy even from his prison cell. And Jesus even tells us that we won't find joy in the comforts of life, in soft robes and palaces. Now, Isaiah's prophecy isn't ignorant to real human struggles. The whole book of Isaiah is written to people who were in exile. Their homes had been overrun by a powerful army, and many of the people who had been, they had been taken away to strange lands far away from home, and for 70 years, they were in exile with this vast, barren, dry desert between them and their homes. In their condition, trying to make it back home on their own would certainly mean death. But there they were, in Babylon, in exile from their homes, and they felt like they had been separated from God, their source of life. They felt like God had maybe even abandoned them. And yet into this situation, Isaiah shares this note of joyful expectation. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. And it goes on and on. God is still with you even in your deepest troubles, Isaiah is saying. And God will bring you life abundantly. Even the desert of your lives will rejoice and will bloom. The driest places of your lives will be brought to life as, as with water. Even when you might feel abandoned or lost or hopeless, God is with you. There will be a highway through that desert to bring you home. Even in those most desperate places in your lives, watch for these signs, Isaiah is saying. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the deaf hear, those with diseases are cleansed, those who are pushed out of community, who who feel like they're separated from community, are welcomed back for who they are, and the dead are raised. 
These are signs of God's work, of God's presence. Sometimes it can be difficult to know really if it's true, if it's really God, if, if this really makes a difference. Because sometimes, sometimes when you might feel like you're in a desert place, in a rough place in life, you might be able to look out there in the world and you might see some of those signs. But when you're in those rough places in your life, in life you might be wondering, well, what about me? How do I know that this is real if I don't feel it, if I don't experience? But hold on to those signs that you see even out there, Isaiah is saying, because in God's time with God's ways, you will see it. Your own wilderness will bloom with beauty and joy. That's what John faced in the, in the gospel reading today. The very beginning of the gospel started with his location. It says, when John heard from prison what the Messiah was doing. See, John had been out preaching in the wilderness that Jesus is the Messiah. He's been trying to give people hope. He's been pointing to all these blooms in the deserts of their own lives. But now here he is. He sits in prison, and I can't help but imagine what he must be wondering. He was preaching about this Messiah, and now I can't, I, I imagine he must be wondering, was I right? Is he the one? Is he the Messiah? And if so, why am I sitting here in prison? I thought the Messiah would, would come to make all of this right. So John sends some of his followers to ask Jesus, are you the one? Are you the one who's to come? Or, or should we just keep wait, waiting? And Jesus answers in his most Jesus-y way, <laughs> which sometimes sounds a little bit sarcastic. I think it actually is a little bit sarcastic. It's like Jesus is saying, well, I don't know, you tell me. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have good news brought to them. So I don't know, what do you think? <laughs> so even in his prison cell, John gets his answer. Like any of us who face struggles in life, we can feel like we are lost in a wilderness that's devoid of all life. But every once in a while, someone else points out for us where we can find joy, where there is life even if it's not a firsthand experience yet. So as Jesus keeps on talking in this gospel reading today, he, he tells us we're not going to find those, those the find joy in the comforts of life. And that's what he means when he says, again, I think a little bit sarcastically, what did you go out here into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? No, John's more than that. He's not just some weak messenger who is just supposed to give a message and then just bend over and get out of the way. He is a sign from God. He is one who points, in, points for people in the wilderness, in their own wilderness, that there is joy to be found. But sometimes we can't see it from where we stand. So Jesus continues, he keeps asking, what, what then did you go out here to see? Did, did you go out here to see someone dressed in soft robes? Look, the, the people with soft robes are in royal palaces. So what did you go out to see? Jesus is, is telling us here that joy doesn't come from the comforts in life. I know a lot of times we think that. Happiness is something we define as, as dependent on comforts and on external circumstances in life. But no matter, but joy is deeper than that. Joy is something that can be found even when the bottom drops out. Joy can be found even when your life may feel dry and lifeless. Even when you face death, joy can be found. Life can be found. That's the promise for which we wait. Our celebration of the birth of Jesus, who died on the cross, who suffered a horrible wilderness death. But when he rose again, he brought us to new life. 
He brings us to joy even in the most difficult of circumstances, knowing that nothing, not even death, has the final word for us. This joy can be difficult to see. If we're like John and we're, we're sitting in prison of life, whatever your prison may be, or you're sitting in the desert like the exiles, wondering, when are we going to get out of this? Joy can be hard to see. Sometimes we just can't find it alone. Sometimes we need help. So, that's what I'm going to ask of you today. I would love to hear a few examples for you. I have a friend who says, God's word has not been spoken until God's people have spoken. And so I want to give you an opportunity, if any of you have examples of when you or your loved ones felt like you're in a wilderness land, you're in a desert landscape, and yet somehow you still experience joy. Or where, where can you see glimpses of joy today when all that stuff is going on out in the world? Where do you see blooms in the desert or water in the driest places? So I'll open it up. Anybody have any examples of where you have found joy? Anybody brave enough to share? Yeah, she said, look at the picture. This is, a, you know, if any of you have ever been in a desert, occasionally they have what's called a super bloom, right? That in these dry places, I mean, you think about it, one little flower, one flower is not much but it's just spread across the, the desert landscape. That's what joy is like for us. One little thing. It doesn't have to be this great miraculous thing, but one little sign can bring great joy. Anyone else have an example? Yeah, Joel. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. Thank you. For those of you online, if you did not hear him, Joel Bronner was sharing, um, you know, things in his life are crazy busy right now with work, but also he's helping coordinate so many things here at Zion, including the call committee. And so he mentioned that, you know, that it's, it's really busy and he's getting slammed with all this stuff and yet being able to connect with people, see how God is working through that. Thank you for sharing that. Anybody else have anything you want to share? Gene. Nice. So Gene was talking about the, you know, living in Salt Lake City a long time ago, right? And you, some of you may know Salt Lake City is not necessarily um, a bastion for Christian churches, right? And yet they found this little church that knew them well so that even when they, if they were missing for a Sunday, they always wanted to know, are you okay? What's going on? Yeah. Anybody else have an example? First here and then back there. <laughs> yeah. Their oldest son, my brother, had, has been struggling with cancer for the last year. And so for him to be able to actually travel and, and come out here, um, you know, and look well. So, and cook. Thank you. Cassie, you have something to share?
Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Cassie, for sharing that. She was sharing, you know, th there are times in her life where she's feeling like she's walking in the desert, has a, some really tough things that she has to do, has to face, but she has never felt alone. She's always got other people helping her. Those little signs of joy. There are all kinds of, that's, that's what I think God gathers for, for us as church, is to be those little signs of joy for each other, for the world around us, for so many. Sometimes, as I said, it's so hard to see that from, from our own perspective. Sometimes we might need help. As Isaiah said, strengthen the weak hands, make firm the feeble knees. He's saying, do this for other people. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you all for, for those of you who shared, and, and, and I encourage you to continue to think about these ways. We have an, a little bit of an exercise in this time of worship. We call it sacred space. It's an opportunity for each of us to, to engage in what we've heard from God's word in a little bit different way, if you would like to. Um, first of all, you can just stay where you're at and, and sing as we sing joy to the world and sing of the joys that we have from God. Also, though, we have a, a little bit of an exercise over here. You see a bulletin board that has a desert landscape on it. And there are flowers down there on the table. So if you want to come forward and, and continue thinking about these little signs of joy that you find that color our desert landscapes, the desert landscapes of our lives, come on up. And as you think about that, give that up to God. Thank God for it. And, and uh, pin a flower up there and help our desert landscape uh, bloom with joy. And um, also over here on the globe, as we've been doing through this season, I invite you, um, if you want to come up, there are little dots, thicker dots, each color. Um, there's a, a key up there that tells you each color means a different thing. So if you want to come and put one of those stickers up on the globe as your way of praying for people in another part of the world. Um, it's not a perfect globe, but it'll give you an idea. Try to guess where God knows who you've, who you've got in mind. So let's enter into this time now of sacred space as we sing joy to the world and feel free to move about the sanctuary. up here and kind of circle around behind the font. All right, that's fine. Take your time, and if you want, I'm going to give a couple of these to you because then you don't have to look behind you at the screen.
We have the joy of having a baptism this morning for Michaela. Uh, in baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are all born children of a fallen humanity, but by water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and we're made members of the church, which is the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. So we have a number of sponsors, uh, godparents up here. And so I'll ask you, uh, sponsors, if you, there's, if you will present Michaela for baptism. So those words there, the, right there where it says sponsors. Oh, okay. How about I'll ask this? How, who, and you, sponsors and godparents, you represent uh, the, a community and, and a family that surrounds Michaela in love. So I ask you, uh, just to give us a sign, who presents Michaela for baptism? All four of you, right? Yeah. Amen. And so then also... Parents, Will and Rocille, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Michaela baptized into Christ? As you bring your children to receive the gift of baptism, you're entrusted with responsibilities to live with them among God's faithful people, to bring them to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in their hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture them in, in faith and prayer so that your children may learn to trust God, to proclaim Christ through word and deed, to care for others and the world God made, and to work for justice and peace. So do you promise to help your children grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, answer, I do. Sponsors, godparents, do you promise to nurture them, to nurture Michaela in the Christian faith as you're empowered by God's spirit to help her live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? If so, say, I do. And for all of you, people of God, do you promise to support Michaela and her family and pray for them in their new life in Christ? If so, say, we do. We do. We do. To profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? <laughs> I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the, On the third, third day, he rose again. again. He, he ascended, ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give thanks, O God, for in the beginning, your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word, you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. 
Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death, and you raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word that all who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gonna get a little bath. Do you see the cloth? Oh, it's in the basket. The basket behind me, sorry. Hi there. <laughs> Michaela Augustine Lentz, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. I'm going to pray for you. Yeah. We're going to pray that God's spirit would be in you. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth. You raise us up to new life and you cleanse us from sin. Sustain in Michaela, sustain in Michaela with the gift of your Holy Spirit the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. So we're going to mark you with the cross of Christ. Danica, you have this cross on you too. So does everyone who's been baptized. You can't see it, but you can always know it's there. You are marked with the cross of Jesus and sealed by the Holy Spirit forever. Well, this is fun. Yeah. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Amen. So it is my blessing, my honor, my privilege to introduce to you your newest sister in Christ. This is Michaela Augustin Lentz. You see? And all of these people made promises to help care for you and teach you and love you and pay for it, too. <laughs> Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome, we welcome you, you into, into the, the body, body of Christ, Christ and, and into, into the, the mission we share. share. Join, Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing, and bearing God's, God's creative and redeeming, and redeeming word to, to all the world. world. All right. And every year when it's her baptismal birthday, you can light that candle just like you light a birthday candle and celebrate this great gift. You have one too. And if you don't know where it is, I'll give you another one. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. You do, don't you? All right, the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. 
We share a sign of Christ's peace with one another. Also, being sure not to forget our friends online. We wave to the camera and share Christ's peace with you. Peace be with you. Okay. So Advent is this season of waiting. We look around at the world and, and we see that things are not right with the world. And so in this season, we pray that Jesus would come again. Just as in this season we wait for our celebration of Christmas, sometimes we also have to wait for Jesus' presence to come and make things right. In our prayers, we pray that, but we also pray uh, prayers of thanksgiving for where God has been present and made known. And we pray that God would give us eyes and hearts and minds not just to rely on God, but also to be God's presence for those places that are wilderness places and desert places. So there in this season, we have been praying through the headlines. I literally just read a headline and uh, pray for God's presence. This is a way of, during this season, um, to encourage you that when you are reading headlines, when you're listening to the news or watching the news, you also can not just be taking in information, but using that time as prayer too. So now let's uh, begin in this time of prayer, coming before God. God, we ask for your presence in these and in other places in our world where there is suffering and injustice. Man fatally shot by deputies during eviction in Fort Collins. God, we pray for your presence for for this man and his family, his loved ones, also for the officers who were involved, that you would give them peace. Russia-Ukraine war. Russia sells materni shells maternity hospital in Kherson. Police reveal 47,000 war crimes reported. And Putin threatens preemptive nuclear strike as war drags on. Heavy snow, flash floods hit California as central United States prefer, prepares for tornado threats. God, be present to all of these places and more where people find themselves in desert places, in wilderness places in their lives. God of grace, hear our prayer. God, we also lift up the prayers of this church community as we pray for the family and friends of Ginger Klein, who died on Friday night. For Jamie Jurgensen with her diagnosis of lymphoma and leukemia, we pray for her healing, but we also give thanks that she has been diagnosed at stage zero. And we pray for those who are names that are printed in our bulletin as we pray, lift up Mary Jo, Linda, Kathy, Elaine, Becky, Shirley, Cliff, and also those who are struggling with cancer as we pray for Gary, Marcia, Carolyn, Carolyn, Mary Jean, Linda, Marjorie, Vicki, Christine, and Sandy. We pray also for, for Fran, uh, who, who passed out in our first service. We pray that you would guide all the doctors and nurses, the medical staff, to, to find answers for her and bring her to health. God of grace, hear our prayer. 
God, we give you thanks for the gift of baptism, especially today for Michaela and for those members of this church community who se- celebrate baptismal birthdays this week. Allison Stone, Carolyn Carlson, Fisher Peach, Jennifer Schneider, Aaron Demet, Blake Herquette, Cindy Kurtz, Jennifer Barella, Royce Schultz, Ruth Sprain, Sarah Christensen, and Don Fenske. Give us all confidence in this sign of baptism that you have claimed us as your own. God of grace, hear our prayer. And we lift up those places in our lives that, that are signs of your presence and your love. As we, as we pray from the headlines, helping out, out of love, Members of Facebook group organized for the love donation drive to help the homeless. Police honor teenager for impressive heroism as Loveland High School Junior intervened in assault back in September. Lines stretch around a block for free toys from NOCO Secret Samaritan, an anonymous benefactor aided by a legion of volunteers provide an opportunity for hundreds of children across the city and the region to get a free toy, regardless of income. God of grace, hear our prayer. God, we lift up all of these prayers before you, those that are spoken and all of the prayers that that are in our hearts that sometimes only you know. We lift them all up to you and pray that you would be present in our lives in ways that we can feel and know your presence and share it with others as we share your joy. For all this, we give you thanks and pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, you make the desert bloom and send springs of water to thirsty ground. Receive these simple gifts of bread, wine, and money, and make us messengers of your mercy and love for all in need of your healing and justice. We ask this through Christ our Savior. Amen. We hear this promise and we experience this joy in this meal together today and in these words 
in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat this body, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts from God for all of the people of God. Come, the table is set. For those of you joining in on Zoom, and for anyone here in the sanctuary that'd like to remain in their seat, we will commune together first. So if you're here in the sanctuary, if you need a cup, a kit, just raise your hand. Okay. I invite you to open the side with the bread and hear these words and share them with one another. The body of Christ given for you. And take your juice the blood of Christ shed for you. And I invite the rest of you to come forward at the direction of the ushers. We have switched over to bread, loaves of bread, these last few weeks. And I also want to remind you that if you need a gluten-free option, we do have gluten-free wafers, wafers, so just ask us, and we'll be happy to get that for you. Please come. It's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Your rich in love and your slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. Bless the Lord of oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. And on that day when my 
the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. I worship your holy name. I worship your holy name. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We every week say this, but I'll say it again. We have a lot happening here at Zion, so please take those bulletins home with you. There's so much more information, but I'm going to hit a few highlights of what's coming up more immediately today and into this week. Um, First off, if you have marked on your calendar TGIF for this week, this Friday, um, it is being postponed. It will not be this Friday. So just make note of that, please, and we'll let you know when that will be happening again. Lift will be, which is ladies and fellowship together, will be meeting um, this Tuesday. And so hopefully you had a chance to RSVP. If not, just let the office know so that we know that you're coming for their count. On Monday, tomorrow night, on Monday at 6.30, the Woman to Woman book group will be meeting at the home of Cindy Brusco. Next Sunday, I hope you will come back during this um, 1045 service. We will be having our Sunday School Christmas program called Truth in the Tinsel, and the kids will be leading us in worship that day. Right after this, this afternoon, we have the L2F2 Christmas caroling um, no experience required, just come at 2.30. We will warm up, um, practice a little bit, and then head out to several members' homes from Zion, Trinity, and King of Glory to share some joy um, with those at home today. The middle school Christmas party, party starts at noon, like right now, and at least you look excited. <laughs> and our high school Christmas party will be at 4.30 today. Both of those will be at Trinity. So high schoolers and middle schoolers, we hope you can join in those this afternoon. A reminder that on December 21st, we will be having our ELCA Longest Night Worship Service, and we will be hosting it here this year at Zion. And a reminder of our Christmas Eve worship services on December 24th, just a couple weeks away, at 4 p.m., 6 p.m., and 10.30. And Christmas falls on a Sunday this year, so we have a special Christmas Day worship. We will have one service, super important for second service, folks. It starts at 9 a.m. I know you're used to the 1045, but 9 a.m., one worship service, and it'll be in the fellowship hall, and it'll be a more casual feel with breakfast and worship together around the table. So I hope you can plan to join us on Christmas morning for that, that worship. Again, many other things. Please take those bulletins home. Call the office if you have any questions, and we'd be happy to help you get connected to our ministry and mission here at Zion. It's a blessing to be able to worship with you here in person and with you online. And so I invite you to stand as you are able and receive this blessing as you go out into your week. Be strong and do not fear, for God is coming. Indeed, God is already here. So go with confidence into the days ahead and may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ and the presence of the Holy Spirit be among you and within you. Amen.
Great is the Lord, he is holy and just. By his power we trust in his love. Great is the Lord, he is faithful and true. By his mercy he proves his love. Great is the Lord and worthy of glory. Great is the Lord and worthy of praise. Great is the Lord, I lift up my voice, I lift up my voice. Great is the Lord, great is the Lord. Great is the Lord, He is holy and just, by His power we trust in His love. Great is the Lord, he is faithful and true, by his mercy he proves he is love. Great are you, Lord, and worthy of glory. Great are you, Lord, and worthy of praise. Great are you, Lord, I lift up my voice, I lift up my voice. Go in peace. Christ is near. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.